I actually have uh, had a long time interest in chemistry. I grew up in uh, North Alabama during the space race uh, to the moon and my high school science teachers got me interested in science in general and in chemistry I became fascinated uh, when I was a student at the University of Alabama and was able to do laboratory experiments that uh, blew a few things up but I, I managed to survive. There are many ways that people go about trying to evaluate articles, but there are two types of articles that I remember uh, very clearly from, from the journal, which I think are important because of their differences and how they impact people in a different way. One is the field of crystallography is beautiful. It is a science where you can visualize the solid state from the molecules and the ions. And the very first article was a poem written by Roald Hoffman, a Nobel Prize winner, describing the beauty of a crystal. Now that article is probably not in the most highly cited articles of crystal growth and design, but I believe it had an impact on people, which to me is equally if not more important. The other type of article are those that get people to think. The scientific articles are important. There's no question about that. We, we want to, uh, to help teach people, and we want the science to be communicated. But one of the things that the articles that we call perspectives can do is to get people to think, even if it generates controversy. So I remember a series of letters from Ken Seddon, Joel Bernstein, Gautam Dejaraju, and Ashwini Nanjia, in which they got people to really think about whether it's more important what you call something or how you use it in this whole field of uh, polymorphism and the term pseudopolymorphism. And that conversation is still going on today, even as our societies like IUPAC try and define what terms mean, it's very important to remember that it's only a name. The science is what's important. If you're going to publish an article, then know very succinctly and at a very high level what you want to communicate to your audience. Make sure that they understand what you want to say and leave no room for confusion. The second has to do with how you deal with referees. If you're developing your science and you're trying to communicate with the world through any journal, you have to remember it's your article, it's your science. The referees are evaluating and trying to help the journal editors in deciding what's publishable and how to improve it. But ultimately, it's your article, and you have to make sure that it reflects what you want to say. When I started uh, Crystal Growth and Design with ACS in 1999 or 2000, the idea was to create a journal in which the reader could see and visualize the data they could read the words that the authors wanted to convey about the, the text, but up until that time and really even today, the reader is still sort of stuck with what the author wants to show them. But our field in crystallography is a great field for developing new visualization techniques. And I want to be able to provide a forum where the readers can get the data and manipulate it in real time as they are reading the article. And I think they'll get much more out of the solid state chemistry. Thank you for making Crystal Growth and Design and all ACS journals the premier scientific journals in publishing today. I'd like to thank all of the referees and the, and the authors who have taken the time and the effort to build this journal from ground zero up into the journal that it is today. Your efforts on behalf of the journal and on behalf of ACS publishing will help make our science continue uh, our science continually be published at the highest levels.